Hello and welcome. <clears throat> Something different here. I was playing around with an Atari Jaguar emulator. Yeah, so the um, I haven't got the entire history of the Atari Jaguar in front of me, but it was launched sometime back in the 1990s and it ultimately failed because the PlayStation console came out. And then everybody uh, focused on that. But some games were released for the Atari Jaguar. And I was going to check a few out. So I've already installed a few titles here. I've got Alien vs Predator and Cannon Fodder and Defender 2000 and all that. Lot. Sensible Soccer's in there and Worms. So um, I'll record a few videos on this I think. And... Let's start with Jeff Minter's Tempest 2000. So I use an ordinary controller in here and configure it. Configure the buttons and everything. Tempest Dudes. Jaguar version by Yank. And there's a demo, so if you just leave it running, there's a demo. Here it is, Tempest. Select game type to play. Excellent, excellent. Traditional or Tempest Plus or Tempest 2000. Or Tempest. Excellent, Let's go to traditional. Up and down to select level. No bonus. <coughs> I might want to uh, mess with the controls, but it's a bit. Uh, in order to be precise with the controls. Ah! It's a little bit. You've got to think of the settings. Like the sensitivity. It's too sensitive. You can also use the key. But the controls, this one's a little too fast. Got to get him. Fire, damn it! Don't 
let him get in. Don't let him in. Listen to the battle. That's Tempest 2000. Oh, you got an AI for it. Ah! Oh, 
Не бой, я... Super Robots. Thank you. 
I'm going to choose Tempest 2000. Look at this.
That's Tempest 2000. So, uh, so I'll give you a... Little background while I'm here on the Atari Jaguar. Little uh, background on the Atari Jaguar. Since I'm going to be playing some titles on it. It was a home video game console developed by Atari Corporation and released in North America in November 1993 part of the fifth generation of video game consoles. It competed with the 16-bit Sega Genesis, the Super NES, and the 32-bit 3DO interactive multiplayer that launched the same year. They were powered by two custom 32-bit processors called Tom and Jerry, believe it or not, and a Motorola 68000. Atari marketed it as the world's first 64-bit game system. The Jaguar launched with the game Cybermorph as the packing game, which received div divisive reviews. The system library ultimately comprised only 50 licensed games. And blah, 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 blah. Etc, etc. The Jaguar was an important system for Atari after the company shifted its focus from computers, having ceased development of its Atari ST back to consoles. However, the multi-chip architecture, hardware bugs and poor tools made writing games for the Jaguar difficult. Underwhelming sales further eroded the console's third-party support. Atari attempted to extend the lifespan of the system with the Atari Jaguar CD add-on with an additional 13 games and emphasising the Jaguar's price of over... $100 less than its competitors. With the release of the Sega Saturn and PlayStation in 1995, sales of the Jaguar continued to fall. It sold no more than 150,000 units before it was discontinued in 1996. So obviously, um, the original units will probably sell for a lot on eBay nowadays. The commercial failure of the Jaguar prompted Atari to leave the console market. After Hasbro Interactive acquired all Atari Corporation properties, the patents of the Jaguar were released into the public domain, with the console declared an open platform. Since its discontinuation, hobbyists have reduced games for the system. The brief history of the Jaguar. It was launched on November 23, 1993, at a price of $249.99, By November 1995, mass layoffs and insider statements were fueling journalistic speculation that Atari had ceased both development and manufacturing for the Jaguar and was simply trying to sell off existing stock before exiting the video game industry. Got some technical specifications as well. Custom chipset primarily intended to be the heart of a very high performance games leisure computer. As well as a general purpose CPU, Jaguar contains four processing units. These are the object processor, graphics processor, blitter, and digital sound processor. The system was difficult to program for, not only because of its two processor design, but development tools were released in an unfinished state and the hardware had crippling bugs. RAM 2 megabyte on a 64-bit bus using four 16-bit fast page mode DRAMs. Storage were ROM cartridges up to six megabytes. We have some peripherals. CD-ROM based console, a dial-up internet link with support for online gaming, a virtual reality headset, and an MPEG-2 video card. 
However, due to the poor sales and eventual commercial failure of the Jaguar, most of the referrals in development were cancelled. The only referrals and add-ons released by Atari for the Jaguar are a redesigned controller, an adapter for four players, a CD console add-on, and a link cable for local area network LAN gaming. The Jaguar CD is a CD-ROM peripheral for games. It was released in September 1995, two years after the Jaguar's launch. 13 CD games were released during its manufacturing lifetime, with more being made later by homebrew developers. Each Jaguar CD unit has a virtual light machine, which displays light patterns corresponding to music. If the user inserts an audio CD into the console, it was developed by Jeff Minter after experimenting with graphics during the development of Tempest 2000, which has been playing. The program was deemed a spiritual successor to the Atari video music. Visualizer released in 1976. A virtual reality headset compatible with the console, tentatively titled the Jaguar VR, was unveiled by Atari at the 1995 Winter Consumer Electronics Show. The development of the peripheral was a response to Nintendo's virtual reality console, the Virtual Boy, which had been announced the previous year. The headset was developed in cooperation with Virtuality, which had previously created many virtual reality arcade systems, and was already developing a similar headset for practical purposes, named Project Elysium for IBM. The peripheral was targeted for a commercial release before Christmas 1995, however the deal with Virtuality was abandoned in October 1995 after Atari's merger with JTS in 1996 all prototypes of the headset were allegedly destroyed. However two working units, one low resolution prototype with red and grey coloured graphics and one high resolution prototype with blue and grey coloured graphics have since been recovered and are regularly showcased at retro gaming themed conventions and festivals. Only one game was developed for the Jaguar VR prototype, a 3D rendered version of the 1980 arcade game Missile Command, titled Missile Command 3D. Uh, reviewing the Jaguar just a few weeks prior to its launch, GamePro gave it a thumb sideways. They praised the power of the hardware but criticised the controller and were dubious of how the software lineup would turn out, commenting that Atari's failure to secure support from key third-party publishers such as Capcom was a bad sign. They concluded that, like the 3DO, the Jaguar is a risky investment, just not quite as expensive. The Jaguar won GameFan's Best New System Award for 1993. The small size and poor quality of the Jaguar's game library became the most commonly cited reason for its failure in the marketplace. The packing game Cybermorph was one of the first polygon-based games for consoles, but was criticised for design flaws and a weak colour palette, and compared unfavourably with the NES's Star Fox. Other early releases like Trevor McFur in the Crescent Galaxy, Radian, Raiden, and Evolution Dino Dudes also received poor reviews, the latter two for failing to take full advantage of the Jaguar's hardware. Jaguar did eventually earn praise with games such as Tempest 2000, Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. The most successful title during the Jaguar's first year was Alien vs Predator. However, these occasional successes were seen as insufficient while the Jaguar's competitors were receiving a continual stream of critically acclaimed software. So I'll just give it an idea. I don't want to read it all out, but... Um, The controller, the worst game controller ever. I've been looking at pictures of it. Um, the unwarranted recycling of the 1980s phone keypad format and the small number of action buttons. There were three labelled C, B and A. And you just had the... Um, should put it up on the screen really, but... The... This is what the controller looked like, the original controller for the Jaguar. See, I had three red buttons, A, B, and C, a pause and option button, a keypad for movement on the left-hand side, and then a keypad down below, which just zero to, n zero to nine keys, and a star key, and a hash key. That's what the controller looked like. So, um, there will be some more Jaguar games to follow. And see you next time.